Hello everyone, welcome to uh, video 2 of the uh, lecture week 11 for, for the quantitative training strategies. So in this video, we're going to cover the basic concepts of Bayesian optimization and how it tackles the, the, uh, the previous optimization problem, in which case we are trying to optimize the parameters for a training strategy. Right, so let's look at first the objective function. So this is a function that governs how the quantity of interest, which is sharp ratio, is generated, right? So uh, so there are a few attributes I want to summarize here. The first one is we do not have access to the explicit expression, right? And we, that's, therefore we're treating it as a black box function. Uh, secondly, the return value as the, by probing as a specific input parameter is highly sensitive to the choice of backtesting period, in which case, uh, which means that um, the, the return from evaluating the uh, object function at a specific location is noisy because uh, uh, in this case, we are going to just uh, test one backtesting period, right? We're not going to test multiple uh, periods so this uh, backtesting period may not be representative and it is a noisy uh, return from the objective function. And this could also mean that uh, uh, because the test backtesting period may not exactly mimic the future life period. So it's also an approximation, right? So if it's an approximation, then there's, uh, there's some a random noise. Uh, this means uh, in the function return of the, uh, of the objective function. And three, the third attribute is that uh, each functional evaluation is costly, right? So we do one evaluation and it takes some time. So this rules out the option for an exclusive, uh, exhaustive uh, probing exercise. Right? You cannot test out all the points because it's too time consuming. And then the fourth attribute is that uh, we do not have the access to the gradient information. So we cannot use uh, gradient methods, the first order methods to do augmentation. All right, so that's, uh, that's uh, the four characteristics and uh, let's uh, look at three scenarios. So the first scenario is uh, an objective function who is, which is uh, convex. So if it's convex, then it's very easy for uh, optimization because we can just uh, go to the, the bottom and it, this is a, the global minimum I right, want to, to find. Uh, however, the function may also be non-convex. So if, if this is a non-convex function, then we have multiple so-called uh, local minima, right? So this is local minimum, and this is our real true global minimum, right? This is one to find, but you can easily get stuck in one of these uh, local minima. And uh, there's another scenario, which is, uh, again, uh, non-convex, but uh, this has a flat, flat region. So this consists of many saddle points, which means if we are stuck in the point here, uh, it's very easy to get out. And we may not know that there's a better place here because, uh, again, we are doing the search in the dark, right? We, we, we may wrongly believe that this is the solution, but uh, is just uh, getting stuck in the flat region. And we, what we need to do is to get out of this region and uh, explore something else, which is the, the better uh, global minimum. Yeah. All right, so, you, so now you see that uh, doing the optimization when the function itself is black box is very difficult because we do not know the real shape, the real form of the objective function. Uh, let's look at uh, uh, one more example, which is uh, hyperparameter tuning. So this is a very popular exercise in machine learning. Uh, uh, in this case, we're going to tune the learning rate. Right? So the learning rate governs how much of a step do we take at each, uh, at each iteration. So again, this is a prediction problem. We start from here, and then if the learning rate is very small, then we take very little step, so little step here. So this uh, causes the convergence to be very slow. So this is small, a slow convergence because each step is very low. It needs to take quite uh, some time to converge to this uh, local point here, right? So, so too small is time consuming. However, if the learning rate is too big, then it may start to overshoot 
right? So which is something we call divergence, divergence here. So we start from here, the step is too big, then we jump to here, here, and then here. So it starts to deviate or diverge from the the uh, the targets we want to land in. All right, so this is another issue. And that makes the tuning of much uh, of linear uh, the very important exercise uh, when you try to build a machine learning model, right? So uh, using the gradient based methods. All right, so um, so Bayesian optimization is, is a technique that's uh, uh, a well uh, uh, well uh, sort of uh, developed, right? That's uh, along the stream of theory and uh, also practical methods to tackle this type of global optimization problems. Right, so so again, it's tackle the problem using the Bayesian approach. That's why it's called the Bayesian optimization. And again, our goal is to locate the optimum objective value, right? So the highest step ratio, um, and uh, overall possible values combinations. Right? So so and uh, we have a search domain here, uh, which is called environment. So meaning the environment governs how the black box function works, and we're going to treat it as a black box, and then uh, formulate. A systematic search strategy. So the search process starts at a specific initial location and follows a so-called search policy, right? So there's a policy to iteratively guide the search, right? So I want to um, guide the search, collect some feedback, the new observations, right? And then refresh the policy itself and then do the, the following the next uh, proposal. All right, so, so let's look at this uh, graphically. So here we have an environment, which is a, contains a black box function. And this function has no gradients and it is uh, noise corrupted, right? It has noise because uh, we cannot test all the possible scenarios access back testing phase. So it's only optimization that is uh, noise here. Uh, so once we identify a set of parameters we want to test out, then this gives us an observation. So this observation, observation comes uh, when we sample the action uh, at the proposed location, right? So the action is uh, to, to uh, test a certain parameter values, and then the result is the observation itself. So this observation is going to be passed to the policy, which is uh, the central intelligence we are developing to guide the search, right? So this policy determines uh, well to sample next, right? what parameter values to assess uh, in the next round. And this is the recommendation. Uh, again, so this, this represents the post location well to sample next, next in the environment. All right, so, uh, so this is very similar to a reinforcement learning framework. Uh, in, 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 essentially, they are both uh, search policies, right? Bayesian optimization as underlying assumption uh, which uses the Gaussian process the acquisition function to guide the search, which of a product. And then reinforced the learning text uh, tackles the same problem using different approach. Uh, but this, uh, they, they both develop a certain policy to guide the search. All right, so that's it for this video and uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hope to see you in the next video.